My name is Freedom, and I travel with my dogs, Pooperhead and Monkey. Welcome to the Art of La Paz, part two. We had so much information, we had to break it up into two videos, and now you get to see the end. Come check it out. There's some cool stuff here. I have very little information on this, but it is called Pelicano Lanchero, which translates to boating pelican. Vaquitas marinas. The vaquita is a species of a porpoise and is the smallest and is endemic to the Sea of Cortez. When this sculpture was created, the species was already endangered, with only a few hundred remain. Today, the population may be as low as a dozen. They were never directly hunted, but have been driven to the brink of extinction by being trapped in illegal gill nets used to capture totoaba, which is an endangered fish, whose swim bladder is extremely valuable in the Asian medicine market. La Perla de la Paz, or the Pearl of La Paz, one of the favorites of the statues up and down the Malacan. It is a homage to the importance of pearling, which was an economic mainstay until the oysters disappeared in the 1940s due to disease, overfishing, or both. But those days are gone, and this huge aluminum pearl is a fine tribute. Kiosco, or kiosk, is the centerpiece of the Malacone in La Paz. It was first installed in February of 1927, designed by the son of Governor Carlos Manuel Isquera, who used details from master cabinet makers Julian Galindo and his son Manuel. It has been moved and remodeled many times, but has always remained the centerpiece of activity throughout the years. Caracoles Musicos, or seashell musicians, also musical seashells. There's not a lot of information on this other than it was moved because of a fire in front of a department store, and here it sits. El Molino de Viento, or windmill. The windmill you see here is in a little park and provides great significance to the history of La Paz. Besides for gardening and orchards, each store needed a well. If you walk through the old parts of town, you can still see many of the windmill towers, and the wind provided the power to pump all the water out of the ground. Mujer in Natalis, or Woman in Natalis. Jose Curi Bereña was another of the most important Mexican artists of the 1900s. Working in sculpture, photography, and music, he did it all this while pursuing a career as an attorney in banking. Much of Senora Bereña's art contemplated the curved forms of the human body, as you can see in this piece. So here's this building that's behind a lot. It looks like it was some kind of industrial building. And they put up this barbed wire fence, really well the feet. I mean, there's some serious talent. Look at this stuff. Bet you'll never see that on any travel channel. Pooper Jahed just saw a lizard and now she's in hunt mode. Lo viste? I also consider harbors and marinas in the beach cities artwork. Every harbor and every marina is different. There are no duplicates. The slips are arranged in different locations. Their distance from one boat to the next is different. All the moorings are in different locations and it's all based upon the tides, it's based upon the currents, it's based upon the wind and weather. So for reasons of individuality, I do consider a harbor and or marina art. Okay, so I'm gonna take you down a street that's got some pretty cool paintings on it. There's a little graffiti left on it, but uh, let's go check it out. Come on, babies. Here's the street I was telling you about. Come here.
The Sanctuary of the Virgin of Guadalupe is an architectural gem with a marvelous dome in downtown La Paz. It is a large and peaceful church with a modern looking edifice. Admire the open and airy feel of the nave, which is flanked by whitewashed columns. Look for the church's iconic dark red dome that can be seen from street level rising above the rest of the sanctuary. On the northeastern facade, you'll see a colorful mural of the praying Virgin of Guadalupe. Pass through the colonnade beneath the religious image to enter the building, which is flanked by palm trees. Sit at a wooden pew and enjoy the serenity as you take shelter from the afternoon heat. Light passes through the windows wrapping around the underside of the dome, brightening up the white walls of the nave. Study the crucifix and gold frame religious image above the altar. Inspect the various religious relics and artworks dotted on the sanctuary. And so is a nicely constructed but simple placed footbridge or a well located fountain. Well, keep also overhead considered bad. beautiful artwork. The colorful murals in La Paz, Baja California Sur display the cultural origins of the town as well as many simultaneous themes of the indigenous people and the relationships with the sea. It's early morning in the city of La Paz and the sun is slowly alleviating the humidity of the night, recoloring the bay to its intense bright blue. The bell of the corncob bender starts to ring as he slowly pedals his large rusted tricycle, pushing a cart full of unshucked ears of corn towards the city center. As his Cart turns onto the street. He passes a couple of tourists walking with their heads down as they try to navigate the uneven sidewalk. In contrast to the polished sea promenade known as the Malacon, this part of the center feels like a ghost town. Old warehouses repaired with rusty corrugated sheet iron and boards recall the once great commercial glory of the town. Alarmed by the corn vendor's bell, the tourists lift up their heads and look around. They suddenly realize there's a giant flying whale painted amid the cracks on the wall. Before their eyes emerge over nearby figures of emblematic indigenous figures, salty fishermen, and baby sea lions, they are surrounded by sprawling murals. The murals all happened over the course of two weeks. In March of 2017, 26 artists from all over Mexico landed in La Paz and began to repaint 1,350 square meters of the neglected buildings of its center. The project is called Ciudad Mural or City Mural and was conceived by Colectivo Tomate, a group of artists, lawyers, architects, and designers from the city of Puebla, north of Mexico City. They realized that street art could be a tool to spark imagination, empower the disadvantaged, and encourage locals to take pride in their city and culture. The goal is to encourage people to reappropriate their own public space and repaint it in their own image. Initiated in 2009, Ciudad Mural has now illustrated colorful local stories in more than 16 Mexican cities. This urban agency, founded by the marine biologist and activist Lucio Corral, is also trying to inspire Los Pacenos, or the inhabitants of La Paz, to transform their public space using simple, non-expensive, and tactical actions. When the artists arrive, recalls Corral, we introduce them to the most emblematic people of the town, the fishermen the local historians and journalists, but also to the beloved piano teacher. Lots of civil organizations also participated. The NGO Espiritu Santo, as parte de ti, even paid for the artist to take a boat trip to the island to see its mystical beauty. After a week, the crew, stocked with his narrative emotion and collective fabric, began to visualize, transcribe the most touching stories. La Paz has a crucial relationship with the sea, something that was celebrated by ancestors in the area and still is by locals today. Visitors come now to La Paz for the aquatic beauty, the aquatic biodiversity, sundry cultures, and profound history. This is what the project, Ciudad Mural and the 300 people of La Paz who participated chose to celebrate together. Thank you for watching part two of the art of La Paz. Monkey, Pooperhead and I really do appreciate you. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe and boop that bell. And if you feel like being generous, we have a paypal.me page and a Patreon page, both traveling with dogs. 
que te vaya bien. 